Greetings and salutations, I am your humble Adobe instructor, AJ Wood, and you're watching episode number 48 of I Create Content. Hey everyone, appreciate you tuning in for today's show. If you caught our last episode, we were actually talking about perspective drawing inside of Adobe Illustrator CS5. Before we jump into today's tutorial, I have some quick announcements. Coming the week of November 14th is Big Design Week 2011. This is five days of action-packed workshop training from content strategy, design, usability, workflow, and even motion graphics. You really want to come out and join us. We've got individual workshops each day. You can attend one workshop or attend all five. And if you attend all five workshops, of course, there's a discount, and there's going to be lots of discounts flying around. But go to bigdesignweek11.eventbrite.com so that you can check it out and you can register. So that's next month, the week of November 14th. I hope that I'll see you there. Second, there were some great announcements this week. Uh, maybe you caught them. No, I'm not talking about the iPhone 4S. I'm talking about Adobe's announcement at the Adobe Max conference. That's right, you're going to see Photoshop on your tablet devices very soon. So coming out, I think it's next month, for the Android, you're going to see Photoshop on Android. And shortly thereafter, you'll see Photoshop on your iPad. So if you're watching on YouTube, here is the video demonstration of Photoshop for the tablet devices. If you're watching on YouTube, you can go ahead and click that icon, watch the video straight away. All right. Today's tutorial is a response to a viewer question. I'm going to apologize in advance because I might mispronounce your name. But Triander Hobsey wants to know how to create this particular logo. Now, I thought it was a good exercise in different techniques inside of Photoshop. I thought it would be kind of cool to take something that somebody else has created and show you how to recreate that. So, let's go ahead and jump on in. All right, I start out with a blank canvas, and what I'm going to do is create a new blank layer. Simply click the new layer icon or use the keyboard shortcut, Command Option Shift N or Control Shift N on the PC. Take the blank layer, and what I'll do is create a selection. So I'm going to grab the elliptical marquee tool, and I'll hold the Shift key, draw out my circular selection, place it on the screen. I'm going to take this selection, it's on the blank layer, I'm going to fill this with black. Just so I have a color, so I have a reference. Next thing I'm going to do is create another new layer. And with the new layer selected, I'm going to go to the Select menu and choose the command Transform Selection. Now I want to be clear, I'm transforming the selection marquee. I'm not using the free transform command which would edit the pixels in the layer. So I'm going to hold the shift key because I want to shrink this down. And I think that's going to be good. That's pretty close, maybe a little, well, let's see. That's pretty close. I think that'll work for us. So now what I'll do is go ahead and just hit enter or click the checkbox, commit that transformation. This is on layer two so that you can see it. I'm just going to fill it with blue. So now that I have the colors there, I'm going to deselect. The reason I created shapes, it's going to be very quick and easy for me to align these and create the ring that I want. So I just hold the shift key, select all the layers, and in the layers panel they're all highlighted. I change to the move tool because now I have options to align the layers. So we'll do vertical center and horizontal center. Now everything is aligned and centered on the screen. What I'll do is select layer one, and I'm going to command or control click layer two. So take a look, layer two, notice the icon behind the hand. I'm going to command or control click the icon on layer two that loads that area as a selection. Notice I'm on layer one. I have the area of layer two selected. I'm simply going to hit the delete key. That knocks it out. Notice if I hide layer two, there's my ring. So I'm going to rename layer one ring so we can keep track of where we are. I'm going to throw away layer two because I don't need it anymore. I'm going to take this ring, 
move it into position, just needs to be up here a little bit, and I will fill it with white. So once again, I'm going to command or control click the ring layer to load it as a selection, and now I'll simply do a fill with white. So now I've filled it with white, I'm going to drop the selection marquee, notice it left a little bit of a black outline. This is because I didn't mess with the selection using Refine Edge to get every single pixeled area. There was a reason I filled it with black. I wanted to leave that ring up. So now I have the ring layer. What I need to do is add the glow. I'm going to create a new layer, but if I hold the Command or the Control key when I click the Create New Layer icon, it puts the new layer beneath the previous layer. So I'm going to label this Glow, and what I'll do is once again load the selection by command or control clicking the ring layer. Now I have the selection loaded, but I don't want the glow to be uniform to the ring. So I'm going to make this selection a little bigger. I'll go to the select menu, choose the modify command, and I will expand it. And I'm going to expand this by about 10 pixels. So I'm going to grow this selection by about 10 pixels. There it is. You can see how much bigger it is than the original ring. And now what I'll do is simply grab my brush tool, B for brush. I'm going to pull over the swatches panel so you can see what's going on. And I'm just going to pick colors and randomly paint. So here we've got the ring this side. I'm going to grab some colors. Go like this. I'm going to go over here. And we'll go over this way. So now I've got my colors there for my ring. I'm going to go ahead and put the swatches panel back. I'm going to deselect by doing Command or Control D. Now what I need to do is actually blur this. Now, if you want flexibility to adjust the blur, to go back and tweak it, let's make this a smart filter. I'll go to Filter, Convert for Smart Filters. Now this is a smart filter. Go to Filter, and I'll do Blur, Gaussian Blur. So you can see here it is on the screen. I'm going to go ahead and adjust it. Let's go about... 10 or so pixels. So there's 10 or so pixels for the blur. I think that looks pretty good. And notice, it is a smart filter. So number one, this means that I can mask it. This also means that I can double-click Gaussian Blur, and if I want to, I can fine-tune, and notice I can readjust the way the blur looks on the screen. So that's the benefit of using a smart filter. There, I've got the glow, but remember, if I pull up the logo, notice the logo has that uh, kind of color, that blur, kind of overlapping the ring. So I'm going to duplicate that effect by adding a mask to the ring layer. So I go ahead and just click. Here's a layer mask. Remember, white reveals, black conceals. So all I need to do is grab my brush tool, B for brush, paint with black, and I can let some of that blur, hey, some of that glow actually bleed. So just like the other item, I'm going to let some of that glow actually kind of bleed in a little bit. Hey, we'll do something like that. There's the glow kind of bleeding over the ring. The last part is to add our drop shadow and add our uh, letters. So I'll go ahead and once again, Command or Control click to put a layer below. I'm going to use the elliptical marquee. This is the shadow. I think it needs to go right about here. Hey, I think that's good. Going to fill it with black. Hey, going to drop that. And this time, I'm not going to use a smart filter. I'm just going to go to Filter and Blur, and I'll just choose Gaussian Blur. Don't need a smart filter on this. Sometimes it's okay to be destructive. And we'll go this way. There we go. Click OK. Now I've got that. The last thing is to add the letters. So I'm going to grab the Type tool. I'm going to choose Helvetica New as my font. Hey, I'm going to size this about 42 point and then I'll click on the screen, and we're going to type here, all uppercase, round, whoops, all uppercase, round, caps lock, please, <laughs> try it again, round, circle. Okay. Now, this text is spread out. I want to point out I used the character panel, and I have changed the tracking. So I'm going to just show you here, this is the tracking that's controlling how that text looks. So I put tracking ahead of time. So here's the tracking on that to spread the text out. So that's what I used with the character panel to adjust that text. 
The next thing is the text had a little bit of a gradient on it. I can add the gradient by using the blending options, my layer style effects. I'm just going to choose gradient overlay and the default gradient overlay goes top to bottom. I'm going to make this go 180 degrees left to right so I don't lose the text. I'm just going to scale this up. Now we have the gradient that matches the logo. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Let me go ahead and bring up the original logo. Let's throw these side by side for you to see. Hey, on the right is the original. On the left is my rendition. That's created in Photoshop. If this tutorial's helped you out, please give it a thumbs up. Remember, I'm responding to your request. I'm creating the videos and tutorials based on the questions that you ask and the comments you leave. So hit me up on Facebook, on Twitter, on Google+, my blog, ajwood.com, or here on the YouTube channel. So that's what I have for you today. You guys have an excellent afternoon, and I'll see you next time.